Yeah, recording? Cool, yeah, let's do it. So, hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna share with you on this free training on how to buy businesses for a living. I'm gonna share with you why you even wanna do this and the steps to do that. I don't know how much this video is gonna take, but I'm gonna free fall with you, probably gonna keep it for under 30 minutes. So stick with me and you're gonna learn a lot about this space on how to buy existing established business. I'm talking businesses doing at least a million a year in sales. And I mean, for most of you guys, that's probably one deal that you need in order to become financially free. Most of you guys who start to be an entrepreneur, I mean, you try to start a business in order to get to a point where you're owning a business doing at least seven figure in year in sales. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to go and buy existing one like that. And I'm gonna share with you why, in my opinion, it's so much better. Now, just a second about me, if you don't know me yet, my name is Moan Pober. I've been involved in business for more than 10 years now. Over the last few years, I've been involved in the space of buying businesses. Uh, one of my uh, most uh, famous acquisition is an app company that I bought and turned around. The app became one of the top 100 apps in the App Store. And over the last year or two, I helped hundreds of entrepreneurs buy probably close to 100 businesses. Like one of my guys bought 32 businesses. I have a guy who bought three businesses in less than a year. And I have many people who bought like one business here, one business there. The thing with buying businesses is that after you buy one business, that's pretty much can set you to become financially free. So most people then need to make the decision, do they want to step back and have the lifestyle and financial freedom? Or like my, one of my guys, Dan Genzel, he, he just loved the idea of doing deals, right? So he went out there, he, he I think he's in his 32 or 33rd deal already. Um, and that's kind of like where I am right now. I just, I'm just a deal junkie. I want to do as many deals as possible. Um, some of them are in the process that I'm going to share with you today. Some of them are shorter deals where you can literally have an amazing capital event within a few weeks. Um, but today I'm going to share with you the step-by-step -step process of how you can buy your first business or how if you have an existing business, how to go out there and buy an existing business and then grow your existing one by acquisitions. And in my opinion, that's the fastest way you can grow because there's only so much growth you can do organically by growing one client at a time, by doing more sales, more marketing. And when you buy an existing business, you can grow by hundreds of percentages in, in revenues pretty much in a matter of um, a day or two, just from the moment of you signing the contract, right? Obviously, it's going to take you time to get there. But when you're done with the deal, I mean, you just bought another seven figure in revenues. So let's get to the steps, right? So first of all, before the steps, why is that even important? So first thing is time. As you probably know, if you start to start a business from scratch, it's going to take you a long time to become successful at it. And unfortunately, most startups fail. I mean, 96% of businesses fail in their first uh, 10 years. And even those who make it report less than $50,000 in revenues. So the time alone of you, the time and money. So let's, let's talk about, you know what? Let's talk about time, money, and leverage. And kind of like combine those things before we talk about lifestyle. Because... In the end of the day, those are the things that people really want, right? When they get into business, what people care about? They care about their income, they care about their lifestyle, uh, they care about impact, I guess. So when you start a business from scratch, to get to a point where you're making money can take you a lot of time to just get one client. Like the, the work, the hustle to get to a point where you're getting yourself one client can be really, really difficult. And for those of you who try to start a business from scratch, you know how difficult that is to get a client. And I'm not even talking about retaining that client, right? That's another conversation. So in terms of time, I can show you here in those steps on how you can buy an existing business literally at the same amount of time that it will take you to start to get a client. You can just go and buy a business because the process is pretty similar. It's pretty much a marketing process. The, I guess instead of you looking for one client, you now just go out there and look for one business. So instead of growing one client, you grow one business at a time. So that's, that's in terms of money and time. Uh, in terms of money, sorry, when you, when you want to start a business from scratch, I know people who literally spend their life savings on trying to start a business. Um, I'm not even talking about the months it takes them to get clients. They're spending their life savings to, to get to a point where they can grow their business. And no one guarantee anything. 90% will fail. I don't care how much you're going to invest of your own money into the business, you still have 96% of failures. So in terms of money, and that's the reason on why I suggest you to buy an existing business is that it's probably going to cost you the same amount of money, if not less, to buy an existing established business 
with existing revenues, profits, employees, customers, brand recognition, and you have less risk because you're getting yourself into something that's already established with existing assets and your chances of failing, let's say if you were to go out there and buy a business that's already existing for 10 years, the chance of, of you failing with that business is much lower because it's something that's already established, that's already existing for 10 years. It's pretty much uh, skipped or you already hacked the startup phase because the startup phase is the first 10 years. But if you buy an existing business that's already existing for 10 years, you pretty much skip that steps by using money and leveraging time and that's come back to leverage because when you buy an existing business you can use its own assets to pay for the business so when you go and look for a business right you're looking for a business doing at least a million a year in sales that business got assets on the balance you things like accounts receivables real estate cash uh, equipment inventory you can use those assets as a leverage to buy those businesses. You can go to financial institutions and tell them, hey, look guys, I, I want to buy this business. Obviously, there's much more involved in the process and position yourself right. But you can literally go to those institutions and tell them, look guys, I have this business that I want to buy. And the chances of them loaning you money to buy that business is much higher or like 90, 100% higher than if you try to start a business from scratch. Go and try to raise capital from a financial institution when you have just an idea for a business. Right? Obviously, you have venture capital firms and angel investors, but they, I mean, it's, it's so much more difficult to raise capital for a startup than it is to raise capital for something that's already established, that's already existing. Right? So that's pretty much cover the, the leverage, the time, the money. When you buy something existing, you already have all those assets. Right? And in terms of lifestyle, most people that I know, they start, they, they get themselves into business to begin with at least, to get more income and more lifestyle. Right? After that, that, come, that comes uh, impact, right? When you want to add value to the board and all that. And that's pretty much, uh, for most people, they go into that mode after they already have the lifestyle and income. Now, in terms of lifestyle, I don't know anyone who started a business who have a nice lifestyle. You pretty much need to work your ass off 24 seven to get to a point where you have anything. And with buying an existing business, the fact is that you already get yourself into something that's already existing with existing employees who can do the day-to-day -day work for you. And then you can buy a business in an industry that you don't even know about because you have professional managers who can run the business for you, already run the business for the old employers, right? For the old, old owner that you're now going to replace. So you can have the lifestyle from day one. You can buy a business that's already have cash flows that can pay for salaries for other people who can manage the day-to-day, -day, which then allows you to step back and become what we call the owner investor, which you're going get, to get to uh, in a bit. So... That's the beginning, right? So that's the why, guys. Why, why you should even buy an existing business versus starting it from scratch, right? Because in my opinion, that's the best thing you can do if you want to be an entrepreneur. Unfortunately, most people don't know that it's even possible. And just to give you a quick uh, story about that, just think about you, if you want to buy, uh, a, you want a laptop, right? Are you going out there and building a laptop from scratch? Are you buying the screen separately and the keyboard separately and then you try to combine everything together and, and build one from scratch or you just go to the app store and buy an existing laptop that someone already built for you and worked years to create for you right what do you do you, you'll tell me hey Ron, of course of course i'm buying an existing laptop that someone already built for me so if that's the case why everyone isn't doing the same in business why everyone out there try to create something from scratch i mean Maybe you have this unique idea that no one ever thought about. Maybe you have the next Facebook in mind and the next uh, artificial intelligence robot in mind that you want to create. In that case, I'll tell you, you know what? Go and start it from scratch, change the world and make an impact. But if you just want the lifestyle and the income from business, why won't you go to buy something that's already existing, already established? And heck, I mean, Look in the US, there are millions of baby boomers who want to retire every single day. And they have what we call a boring business, right? I mean, engineering businesses, construction businesses, manufacturing businesses. And those baby boomers, they don't know what to do with those businesses because they want to retire and they don't have anyone to give those businesses to because their children don't want anything to do with those businesses. The reason for that is because those are boring businesses, but those are the best businesses for people like you want to be an entrepreneur because they are established. They already exist for sometimes 20, 30 years and they're very stable because maybe they grow slow, but they're stable. The chances of them failing down. I mean, many times I think those businesses are more 
established and stable than real estate investments like seriously especially with what happens in the market so that's why i know that buying an existing business is so much more lucrative in terms of income in terms of lifestyle in terms of your impact even if you have a crazy idea i think you better just go and buy an existing business in that sector and bring your ideas into that sector that's existing business because you already have clients you can test your crazy ideas on right you already have someone you can work with instead of you starting everything from scratch and just hoping that that you'll get there so that's that steps now how do we even do that that's the steps so criteria first of all what are our steps so first thing we need to do is pick a criteria what kind of business you want so how do you find the business that you want to buy right now when you understand hey it's much better to buy an existing business than it is to start from scratch i want to walk you through the, the steps real quick so you understand what you need to do next so first of all you got to pick a criteria right figure out with yourself Imagine yourself in a year from today, what would be the ideal business for you to own? What sector would that be in? How much money will you make from that business? Um, do you want to run the day-to-day -day of that business or do you ideally want to have someone running the day-to-day -day for you? For me personally, I don't want to run businesses day-to-day. -day. I like to be the strategic guy. I like to be the one who's responsible for the vision. I like to have big ideas. I like to do negotiations on big deals. I like the art of the deal. I'm just like a deal junkie, you can say. So you got to pick your criteria. If you don't know what sector to pick, just pick one and run with it. I would say find a combination between your passion, your expertise, uh, your context and experience. Use all those things. Pick something that can work for you and, and just run with it. In the end of the day, even if, even if you don't know what sector to pick, you're going to learn more in a few weeks of finding deals about that sector and business then most people who start businesses from scratch will learn in years and let me share with you why right so that's the criteria figure out what kind of business you want not just in terms of i'll just add to that not just in terms of uh, sector but also in terms of how much in revenues you want to make how much in profits you want to make how much money do you want to take for yourself each year in terms of uh, salary or dividends or bonuses or obviously whatever income you want to make to be able to live your lifestyle some of you guys want to quit your job so maybe you, you want to tell yourself hey you know what first business i want to buy a business that can just pay me enough so i can quit my job and be a business owner an entrepreneur full-time some of you guys already have an existing business so maybe you care less about the money and you care more about the synergies and cross-selling opportunities with those businesses right so let's say you have an existing business doing social media marketing that i see many people try to start right now let's say you have a social media agency business right now what you can do is go and buy a complementary business to social media you can go and buy a business doing seo and then you can have cross-selling between customers you have a list of clients and services and the business that you just bought have a list of clients clients and services you can then cross sell between services and customers and you can have a lot of cost savings so for example if you're in the same location your same city you don't need two office spaces many times you can just combine them um, same with uh, marketing departments or finance departments many times you don't need two accountants in your business so that alone can save you a lot of money and the beauty is if it's your second business that you're buying now we're talking about every cost savings will go to the bottom line, just your net profit, which you can take home. So for some of you guys, when you buy a second business, um, maybe you care less about the money and the profit that that second business is making. Maybe you care more about the assets that they have, like a specific technology or a list of clients or, like I said, different services that they can offer that you don't. So that's in terms of criteria. We got that. How to find deals, right? So finding deals right now, we're in 2018, guys. If you don't know how to find those deals, you got to be more resourceful. Obviously, there are better ways than others, but I mean, we all know Google, right? If you really want, just go and Google businesses for sale. There are millions of results out there that you can just go and search for. And am I saying that all of those businesses you can buy tomorrow? No, obviously. So what is more important here is having a set of filter that you can go through really fast when you find in those deals and the beauty with buying businesses is that you can learn more about a specific sector or a business in a few weeks of talking to business owners because think about it you're going to talk to business owners who are doing 10 20 million a year in sales potentially or even if it's a small business doing one two three million a year in sales and you will learn more about that business as a potential buyer than you will learn about anything they will share with you 
more about their business than they'll share with anyone else. If you know how to position yourself right, obviously, and make them feel comfortable, they will share you with you more about their business than they share with anyone else because they want to sell you on why you should buy their business. They will open all of their books, all of their systems and processes, everything. You can learn more about, if you want to learn about a specific sector in the world of business, go and give it a try for two weeks and position yourself as, the, as a buyer of that business and get access to their data. You will learn things that's already working. You will learn about their marketing processes that are already working, how their operations are working, how their finance departments are working. You can learn so much about business. Literally, you can learn in a few weeks just from talking to business owners as an investor, as a business buyer, then you will learn in a few years from trying to start anything from scratch because then you're just reinventing things and sometimes it's just not working, right? So here, finding deals and talking and having conversations can help you just learn a lot about business. So that's about finding deals. Next thing is about making offers, right? So obviously we need to talk to those business owners, uh, we then get in touch with them. We want to get all of their information, like we said. And then we want to get to a point where we can make offers on those businesses. How do we make offers? Obviously, it's, it's kind of like similar to real estate. We want to understand what's going on in your market. And obviously, every sector is different. But you want to understand what kind of offers or deals were made in your sector over the last year or two, right? And you eventually, in the end of the day, you want to make similar offers. And... Um, some of them will accept your offer, some of them not. Obviously, some are more motivated to sell their businesses than others, right? So the third thing is we want to make offers. And the fourth thing is obviously capital. So how do we pay for those businesses, you're probably asking, right? So, and the answer to that, there are many, many different ways to pay for your, those businesses. And there are many, many ways to do deals for buying businesses and getting equity in businesses. And you'll be surprised that just one of them is cash. I mean, cash is just one way to pay for a business. You can pay in value. There are so many different ways to pay for a business in terms of value, especially if you have an existing business. It's so much more easier for you to go out there and literally get equity for free in different businesses because you have different value to offer. When you present yourself as an investor, bringing money to the table is just one thing. If you, have, if you can bring access in terms of resources, time, uh, money, like I said, all those different assets that you can bring to the table can give you equity in those businesses. Uh, but, and we have nine different ways where we close those deals. So there's many, many different ways to structure deals and negotiate deals. Let's keep things simple. If you need access to capital, there are thousands of financial institutions that their main focus is to give you access, uh, give you money to do those acquisitions, right? Just think about, it's very similar to buying real estate. So when you're looking to buy a house, many people don't buy their, those houses with 100% of their own cash, right? They go out to banks and they raise some of that capital. They, raise, uh, they, they, they have a mortgage to pay for those businesses. And perhaps they need a small percentage to bring from home. The beauty with business is that many times you don't even need that because you can negotiate with the seller different terms like seller financing, earn outs, and payments that are going to be paid over time using the business cash flow. So that's the beauty in buying businesses. You can pay the seller with his own business cash flow over time because that's business. I mean, that's the leverage buyout word. And if you, if you don't think it's possible, just go and check a book by the name of Barbarian by the Gates. And that's a book about the acquisition of RGR Nabisco, which is a billion dollar acquisition. And you're probably thinking, hey, maybe they probably had billions of dollars to buy that business. Well, no, they didn't pay a single dollar of their own pocket to buy that business. And I'm talking about the billion dollar acquisition. And we're talking about smaller businesses, businesses doing two, three, five million a year in sales. So trust me, it's definitely doable here because especially with small businesses, the owner of those businesses care less about the money. They care more about uh, taking care of their employees, the psychology, who they're selling their business to, and the rapport that they have, have with the business buyer, which potentially is gonna be you. So that's in terms of capital, right? now which leads us to owner investors. So obviously we made offers, we know how to finance those deals. And then after we're doing our own due diligence and we are fine with everything, we know, hey, you know what? We, we made the deal, it's all good. We're becoming the owner. And then it's about the decision. Do you wanna be the owner investor or do you wanna be the owner manager? And obviously all of you guys are different. For some, some of you guys, if it's your first business, maybe you wanna run those businesses day to day. Maybe you wanna be the manager, and that's okay. You can run the business and be the owner manager or owner operator. 
or owner employee, right? And you can be the CEO of the business and be there every day running the business, taking care of the employees and all that. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of you guys might want to be the owner investor, which is you want to own equity in a business, but then you want to step back and get to a point where someone else is running the day to day for you. And the way that that works is basically, obviously you now own a business that's already doing some revenues. You can take some of that money and pay to someone that's already familiar with the sector and can be literally your professional manager who's running the day to day for you. And then you can step back and be the investor. And then it's up to you. Do you want to have the lifestyle and just chill and travel around the world and sit on the beach all day and drinking pina coladas? You can do that if you want. Uh, but trust me, that's getting boring over time. Uh, but some of you need that. You need to get it out of your system. But then uh, I know many people who work with me after they're doing one deal, they're like, you know what, man, that's freaking awesome. I love doing that. Let's do more deals. And then you become an owner investor and you become a deal maker. And all you care about is just doing more deals, right? Doing more deals. And it's up to you. Do you want to keep the business, the deal that you bought? Do you want to keep it as is to run for you? And or do you want to maybe sell it fast and have kind of like a quick flip and, and have a, a nice capital event for yourself? And I mean, heck, if you sell even just one of those businesses, I mean, that can be a few million dollars in cash in your bank account um, if you grow it and sell it after some time. So that's about becoming owner investor or owner manager, right? And it's up to you. What do you want? Do you want to be that or that? Either way, and I think that's, that's our goal in the end of the day, right? Is the financial freedom part. And for most of you guys, one good deal, one good business is all you need. I mean, for most of the people, and when I'm talking about financial freedom, it can be financial freedom and just freedom in general. So let's, let's give you two examples. One of them is for people who already have businesses. And the other one is for those who don't have businesses who maybe work for someone else. So for those who have an existing business, if you go out there and buy another business, that's your best way to get your freedom back. Why? Because you can buy a business with a manager in it who can take over your role, your day-to-day -day role, and then you can step back and have the freedom, right? And just be the, the owner, shareholder, the investor. So that's if it's your second business that you're looking to buy, what we call the bolt-on acquisition. So if you already have an existing business, go out there, buy a business with someone who's already running a similar business to yours and just tell them, hey, as part of the deal, I want you to run both of our businesses and I'm going to step back, right? And it's all good. And in terms of financial freedom, again, we're talking about businesses doing at least a million a year in sales. For most of you guys, that's all you need to become financial free, to get to a point where you're making enough money, where you don't need to work anymore, or... I mean, you can just, like I said, you can either hire people doing the day-to-day -day for you or you can step back. And obviously in those type of businesses, if the business is doing two, three million a year in sales, there's enough money to hire someone and there's enough money for you to take home so you can make, obviously pay for your expenses and, and living costs. So that's about that, guys. And that's why I think, I mean, buying businesses for a living, guys, brings us all back to the, the, the title, right? I think that's the best way to build wealth, to have the lifestyle, to have the income. Unfortunately, most people don't know about that, that it's even possible. And you don't need to get to, you don't need to have millions of dollars in your bank account before you do that. Eventually, all you need is just to be resourceful enough, have the right strategy, and ideally you have some accountability and support from people who already did that. And I'm obviously happy to partner with, with people on deals. That's why I'm doing this. I'm, I want to share my journey and document my journey. I want to help others and I want to do more deals on the back end. So, I, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm very transparent and honest about that. And I, I, we all have our agenda, right? So that's it for today, guys. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about that, we're probably going to put somewhere here below the video some more uh, links to some more free training that I'm going to do about that so we can get more into the details of each step. But right now, I hope this opened your eyes to what's possible and I hope you're going to do it because, I mean, it's definitely changed my life. The fact that knowing that you can even do that, most people don't know it's even possible. Uh, we all know about TV shows like uh, Shark Tank or Dragon's Den or The Profit and we see people who are buying businesses, but we don't know that we can do that before we're making millions of dollars. And that's what I, I want to share with you here. If you think that uh, this info, uh, someone else is going to like it, please share it with others. Um, and yeah, see the links, like I said, to the more training for me below this video. Other than that, I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you think and I'll see you soon.